So hey everyone, today I'm going to be pre-germinating some grass seeds and in this video I'll show you exactly what you need to do it and I'm gonna show you how to do it and I'll also talk a little bit about why I'm doing it. So let's just get straight into it. And as far as what you need for this, is, it isn't much. You only need some buckets and you need some kind of bag that lets through water to hold the seeds. I know a lot of people use paint strainers, but for some reason that wasn't easy to find in Sweden. So I'm using these bags that are for brewing beer, actually. I think you hold the malt in them. And the good thing about these bags is that you don't have to find anything to tie off the bag. Pull this and it ties off really nicely. And of course you need some grass seeds and then at the end you need something to spread the grass seeds with because the seeds are going to be wet so you need something to help spread it and i know across the pond they like to use milorganite to spread this but that isn't available in sweden as far as i know and even if it were if you have a bigger area i mean it's gonna cost you it, it it's not cheap so i'll be trying out sand to spread this and just to be clear i've never done this before this is the first time i'm actually doing this so we'll see how it works out i mean of course you could just let it dry off a bit and make uh, that makes it easier to spread but i don't want to let the seeds dry off too much so I i'll be mixing it with sand to see if that helps spreading it all right let's get into it so the seeds i'm using are kentucky bluegrass and this kentucky bluegrass actually says that it only takes about seven to eight days to germinate that's why i'm trying it out because i'm not a patient guy i don't have the patience to wait 20 days for germination so for this one i'm going to pre-germinate it for about four or five days but you want to hold them in the water until you see the seeds actually start cracking as soon as you see them starting to sprout then you want to quickly get them out on the lawn you don't want to wait any more than that otherwise you'll start growing grass in the bag so i'm going to measure up exactly what i need it's always exciting to open these bags there's a trick to it that wasn't it i guess was it hey hey hey, hey. look at this <laughs> now of course i cut the video so you couldn't see that it this actually took me 10 minutes <laughs> of me fiddling with this string <laughs> well i'll cut all that so it looks like i did it in under 10 seconds <laughs> all right so i'm gonna measure up the grass seeds i need and i think the overseeding rate for this grass is two kilograms for 100 square meters and i'm only using this on half of my lawn so i'm gonna just measure out two kilograms and this is a four kilogram bag that's about half then you just tie up the bag and there you go that's our grass seeds now i don't know what happens if you have a grass seed mix let's say for instance if you have a mix of kentucky bluegrass with ryegrass then the ryegrass is going to germinate way faster than the kentucky bluegrass so i would imagine this doesn't work out that well now fortunately for me all the bags i have are one type of grass seed per bag so in this bag it's only 100 percent kentucky bluegrass all the same kind and in my other bags i have just ryegrass and i also have a bag of just creeping red fescue then i can start them all off in different points of time but if that's all mixed up in one seed blend i have no idea if this works actually it probably does i mean as soon as you see some germination that would be the ryegrass then you can throw that out then you saved some time on the other types as well but i don't think it will work as well but who knows that's just that's just my theory all right so what we do now is that we fill this up with water all right so i filled up the bucket with water and i've actually used a little bit warmer water because i read that that will actually speed up the germination process and now you just put the bag in and make sure you just don't use too much seeds because looking at this bag it does expand quite a bit all the seeds so just be careful you don't put too much seeds in it and the seeds they will want to float so you actually need to make sure it's submerged so that actually floats better than i thought so i'm actually gonna weigh it down with some more rocks just to make sure it's submerged now you need to make sure you change the water after 24 hours and like any good home cooking program i've already prepared <laughs> so this is 24 hours later and what you do then is just take these out let them drain for a bit and I know a lot of people use double buckets and they drill holes in them so then they can just 
easily just drain the water and put the bag in the in the bucket with the holes and it will drain to the bucket underneath. Does that make sense? <laughs> Did I say bucket too many times? <laughs> I don't know, I think, I think you get it. So I'll just do this and let it drain off. And as you can see, the water is quite filthy. And from what I've read, this is toxic. So you don't want to throw that out on the lawn. So just throw it out somewhere else. And that's it. You don't need to keep it submerged all the time. First 24 hours, and then you switch out the water, let it dry off. And then every 24 hours, you submerge it again into water and then let it dry off. So you just need to make sure it's all wet, but it doesn't need to stay submerged. Okay. And I'm actually keeping these indoors because I just want them to be warm enough to germinate fast enough. Now today is Monday. So I am planning on renovating my lawn on Saturday or Sunday. So that means that this will be pre-germinating for four or five days. So we'll see how much time I actually save by doing this. Basically that's it. There's not much more to it. Very easy to do. The biggest problem I can see with this is that we have people coming over tonight. So people will be wondering why you have four buckets of seeds underwater in it. <laughs> But if they don't know you're crazy by now, it doesn't matter. They'll never understand. <laughs> That's the good part about being where I am. If anyone sees what I'm doing right now, or if they come into my home and sees, sees this, they don't even ask anymore. <laughs> they just look at it and say, yeah, looks about right. <laughs> I always do stuff like this. All right, I'm just gonna put these away and then we'll talk a little bit about why I'm doing this. All right, so why am I doing this? Why, 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 why? So f first of all, I read that you get a very much higher germination rate if you pre-germinate the grass seeds like this. So out of all the grass seeds you have in the bag, not all of it is going to germinate when you put it out on the lawn. If you do it like this, then I read that you will get a higher germination rate. More of that seed will actually germinate. And the second part is, I am not a patient guy. That's why I don't seed Kentucky bluegrass. That's why I don't like to seed it at least, because Kentucky bluegrass usually takes about 20, 25 days to germinate. And not only am I not patient, but that's also a long period of time to not allow people on your lawn. And, and if you followed me on my channel, you know that we use our lawn a lot. And I don't wanna say to people, you can't go on the lawn for about a month or two before everything germinates. I mean, that's just way too long for me, but I do like Kentucky bluegrass. So this Kentucky bluegrass only takes about eight days to germinate. And if I can shave off even a few more days by pre-germinating it, I'm going to try it. So those are the two reasons, higher germination rate, and you'll shave off some days of the germination time. Exactly how many days? I, I don't know. I've never done this. I've only read about it. And also you save a lot of water. I mean, keeping a lawn moist for 20, 25 days, watering it two, three times a day when it's hot out. And not only does that take a lot of time, it also costs a bit in water usage. So now we'll just have to wait. I'll just keep track of these. So let's check back on the bags on Saturday or Sunday when I'm doing my renovation and let's see how the bags look then. All right, so see you in a few days. And over the next few days, all I did was making sure that everything is nice and moist. So for the bags that have already been submerged for 24 hours, I just took that and then put it in the bucket with nice fresh water, submerged it for a couple of minutes, making sure everything is nice and wet. And then I drained it off and left it in the bucket. And for the bags that had just been underwater for 24 hours, I took those out, drained it off, because you need to make sure to just dispose of that water it has been sitting in. And then I just drained those off and just left them in the bucket. When I did these steps, I actually understood why it would have been good to have two buckets, one with holes in it, because draining it off takes a while because it holds a lot of moisture. So I had to leave them in the buckets, making sure it drains and then empty the bucket all the time because I don't want any of that toxic water being left in there. So yeah, maybe drilling some holes into a second bucket wouldn't have been the worst idea. And I just kept doing this until I see any sort of action, uh, the seeds cracking or starting to sprout. When they start to sprout, that's when you need to hurry up. 
Yeah, so this is pretty much all I did for four or five days. All right, so now I'm doing my renovation. It's been four days since I started pre-germinating the seeds. So let's have a look how it looks. And if you're doing several bags with different types of seeds, just remember to label them. It's really easy to forget what's what. But I think everything has started to germinate. And this is the rye. And this was, this was what I was kind of afraid of. It, germinates really quickly so four days and it's starting to come through the bag i'm not sure if you can see that so this one i probably could have started just two days before or something and it's the same with the other type of rye starting to come out from the bag then we have the creeping red fescue it is also starting to germinate you see it's sprouting through the bag as well now this one said it takes 14 days to germinate but i reached this point in just four days by pre-germinating it now the only one where i see nothing happening is of course the kentucky bluegrass i really can't see anything happening on this one and looking into the bag i mean i don't see any shoots of any kind anywhere so i'm not sure maybe this one would have needed a couple of more days despite the fact that they said this will germinate in eight days and the creeping red fescue in 14 days the creeping red fescue has sprouted but this one hasn't but we'll see i'll spread it at least it makes for a good test to see even if i don't see any germination how long would it take after it's on the lawn and then for the spreading as we discussed earlier, I don't have melorganite, I don't have humichar, I don't have any of that. I only have sand, so I'm gonna try to mix it with sand and see if it makes it easier to spread. I just left the sand out in the sun, making sure it's dry so it's easier to spread. And I'm in the middle of my renovation. I'll leave a link to it as soon as I'm done. I'm not done yet, so there's no video yet to link to. But as soon as I am done, I'll leave a link to that video. All right, so in the back, I'm gonna do the creeping red fescue and the rye and I kind of want to get the rye out as soon as possible. I don't want to wait anymore, starting to grow out of the bag. So let's try mixing it with the sand and see what happens. Since I have no idea how much sand I actually need, I just put some of it in the bucket and I'll just slowly just start mixing some of the seeds in there to see how much is enough. I don't have any specific measurements for this, so I'll just have to see what works best. So this is the creeping red fescue. I mean, you can see it's starting to sprout. So let's mix it in there. Now this is the problem. <laughs> They've kind of sprouted too much, so they're sticking together. It's not falling apart as easily. And I guess that's the issue if you leave it for too long. I'm trying to break it up as much as I can, and I'll probably kill off some of it in the process. But I mean, what else are you gonna do? We'll see if this survives and how much of it will actually start growing. Now one thing though, I wish the sand was a bit drier, but we'll see how this works. I mean, this is new for me as well. First time I'm doing it, so I guess you learn for next time. Let's take some of this and we'll put it in the spreader. I want to put too much and I'll open the spreader full and see how that works. Yeah, that didn't work too well. I think it's just too wet. Maybe if I put it in a drop spreader, maybe that works. All right, we'll try to put some in the drop spreader and see how that works. All right, so the drop spreader did work a bit better, but it's still just too wet. So I'm just gonna spread it on this piece of tarp and uh, just let it dry off for a bit. Otherwise, it's just gonna be impossible. It worked better with the drop, drop spreader, but not as well as I would have hoped or liked. So I'm gonna spread this out a bit. And then I'll just leave it like this for a while until it dries up a bit. It's just way too wet at the moment. All right, so the seeds have been drying now for a while and they look kind of dry to be honest. It's really hot out today. I've even pulled this out because it was just so hot just standing here. So let's try now. Is it dry enough to go through the spreader or maybe I'll just have to do with the drop spreader or I don't know, maybe spread it by hand. I mean, it does work better now, but still I feel like the drop spreader worked better to be honest. So I'm just gonna keep using the drop spreader actually because it's, it's the sprouted parts that are clogging up. I mean, with the drop spreader, it does work pretty well. 
it comes out together with the sand so that works perfectly but of course the handle for my drop spreader broke so i have to kind of spread it like this uh, <laughs> there's always something right All right, so lessons learned from this. Don't start the pre-germination too early. You really, really don't want it to start sprouting. It just makes everything more difficult. So for the ryegrass and the creeping red fescue, I think only two or three days would have been enough. But that also means that if it started to sprout, put it on the lawn and you start watering it, it should get going straight away. So it does really mean that you save at least four or five days of just watering on the lawn. For the creeping red fescue, that actually takes 14 days to start germination out on the lawn. If these sprout the next day after you put them out on the lawn, I mean, that means that those five days of pre-germination actually saved me about nine days of watering out on the lawn, which is awesome. So I I'm gonna keep doing this every time. And I, I know I read somewhere that this gives you more control over the process. And that is true, but once you've done it a couple of times, because if you don't know how your seeds are going to re react when they are supposed to sprout, it's kind of difficult to plan ahead. It takes a couple of time to get used to it, to the timing, until you get a feeling for exactly how long you need to pre-germinate it for. But if this starts germinating tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, then this is great. I'm gonna pre-germinate all my seeds from now. All right, so now if you wanna know how this turns out and when I saw germination and stuff like that, then you'll have to see the full renovation video instead because I, I don't wanna wait for three, four days to make to finalize this video. So, so if you wanna see the results of this, then go watch that video again i'll put a link to it as soon as it's done and if you guys have any questions or if you have any other suggestions on what to use to spread this instead of milorganite since we don't have that then just feel free to leave a comment so that's it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one